summer of 1988, we went out to ride the half pipe with the bikes. There was a local roller skating rink that had a half pipe, and I seen two silhouettes of uh, these heads pop up over the banister. These two guys started approaching us. I told my friend Ty to, yo, you go, I'll take the heat. So I stayed because we couldn't get away because the grass was so high, we couldn't ride through the grass. They took my bike and I had this weird psychic premonition that happened because I had a knife in my pocket. My brother gave it to me for protection and I was going to pull it out or try to defend myself against these guys taking my bike from me. In an instant, I seen like a flash, I seen blood everywhere, and I was like, someone's gonna die right now. But I decided not to take the knife out of my pocket. You know, that day when I was walking away from my bike, I realized, I was like, I'm gonna get a skateboard because no one cares about skateboarding in my neighborhood, and uh, no one's gonna steal a skateboard from me. I feel like the closest parallel, Jamal skating, the thing it parallels the most with would be probably jazz music. Only when it's happening in unrehearsed, unwritten format. And people who really have that talent for music, seeing them play together without, you know, they're just jamming. That's kind of like where Jamal's really speaks the loudest, I feel like, when he's just jamming, you know? And it's, it's usually, but like we've said, just we're saying, it's in between the moments where we're trying to structure it and capture him, you know, like doing a trick or trying something. His skateboarding like speaks as an art form the most when he's kind of free and just moving through space, especially through a city. What's amazing is I've, I've always been interested for Toy Machine in working with people that have like a, a good personality. A lot of companies might go only for talent, you know, it's like this guy's incredible skater. For Toy Machine, it's like if I don't want to be hanging out in a van with you on a skate tour, then, you know, even if you're the most incredible skater ever, I, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with it. And so I think in, in a lot of ways, Jamal was a perfect fit for Toy Machine because he was artistic and, you know, a great skater, of course. That's always like number one is like good skater. But but the second thing is, do I want to hang out with you and like and be around you because I have to live with you? So that's what I think was so cool about Jamal. And uh, on tour, we'd be on a uh, skate tour and I would I would be writing in my book and I would see that he's writing in his book. So I would always go check out what he was doing and uh and making these like sketches and artwork like that i think he did a lot of stuff like this early on too that was like really abstract a time that i could consciously remember that like i made a decision that i'm gonna be an artist is i have to say when i was in art school because before then i was writing and i was drawing and I was into skateboarding and I would see the skateboard graphics and all these things and I took that as second nature to be making things all the time but when I got to art school I remembered falling in love with being in the studios and painting and being surrounded by other artists and walking by studios and smelling turpins and chemicals from people painting and just the smell of things being made. I just, I fell in love with that. I think that's when I consciously realized I'm an artist. This is what I have to do. It helped me to blossom and to discover more about myself, why I had certain tendencies to be the way that I am. <laughs> 